da da da. Now comes the reggae, which is very close to rock steady. You know, reggae is close to rock steady. But now it's like the reggae come again and change the beat, so the beat keep on changing. The drum and the bass was locked together. And once you have the drum and the bass locked like a oneness, that's where you get that heartbeat sound, like an African thing. We had one last song to do. And to said to us, I'm going to do a song called Do the Reggae, let's do the Reggae. And then he just sat there for a couple of seconds, wrote the lyrics, and then the chorus was Do the Reggae. And before you know it, he has been, he was credited with credited with being the first person to put reggae on record. Do the reggae was a, the song that make people know what our music call in Jamaica today, do the reggae. Oh, oh. I've got a vision yeah. early this morning yeah. and that you really want me I got to the studio and Toots was sitting there in a room in a chair, you know, and, and, he was, and they were playing a track. And he wasn't moving an inch, and I figured he was just listening to a playback, you know, because I'm watching through the, the, the glass. And, uh, and then the track finished, and they said, that's great, and it actually, and this was an up-tempo thing. And he'd been singing that actual, he was actually singing that, and he was not moving a muscle. And, and you know what a ball of energy is, and uh, you know, and I, I realized that he was bringing it all in from the inside, he was bringing it all out that way, you know, and it was, it was quite incredible to watch. I thought, I said, is he sleeping? Is he concentrating on something? He was actually singing, and you couldn't see a muscle move, and I thought, well, baby, that is, <laughs> that's, no, that's how he gets that sound. This music now was more reflective of our inner feelings, of our cultural heritage, not just Jamaican culture, but beyond Jamaica, how we came there, before we came there, what happened. Because since the leaders were our inspirational leaders were Marcus Garvey and His Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie, then we started tracing their roots and what they were saying, and this reflects in the music. There was a sense in the early 70s, a little bit, for those of us who grew up in the 60s, oh, you know, God, you know, the 60s are over, and, you know, things are kind of slowing down a little bit. We know who all the greats are now, and they're all on the stage, and, yeah, they're great, but we're used to them. And then suddenly it was just like, well, wait a second, there's a whole other world of music here, and that's what the harder they come accomplished. I mean, it just widened your eyes and you know, blew the top of your head off. It was very, very exciting. The holiday camp was kind of before Bob Marley. 
you know, before Bob Marley made it big in America with Catch a Fire. The first real big reggae thing that happened, what really brought reggae to the world was the holiday come. When Chris Blackwell put me into this flame with Jimmy Cliff singing a long time before me, but they made the flame like Jimmy just came from country and see me singing in the studio. That scene in the studio, we took singing Sweet and Dandy in the recording studio. I mean, it just touched everybody. And that was the first time people had really seen reggae. First time people seen a reggae band live in a studio performing. <laughs> And that really turned me on to reggae, and it became a big fad in the Boston area because I think there's over 300 colleges, and probably was happening elsewhere, but that was my scene at the time. We just couldn't get enough of Toots. That's the best kind of cinema there is. It's word of mouth. It's, it's, it's folk cinema, you know. And, and, I, and I think if you wanted to know what, what reg, where reggae came from or what it means, you watch that movie, and it tells you everything you need to know. Pressure up sweet and dandy. You know, it's just like... It's like finding another world, like Bring It Dude, you know? It's just a funky, a funky whole new chapter for somebody who likes soul music and rhythm. And essentially that was the birth of reggae here. This film was a milestone to express another area of the world that is not just common to Jamaica, but something common to the rest of the world. So it was a universal expression. I don't know who wrote that, that movie, but Jimmy Cliff had that thing down pat right there. Everything in Hard of Come was real, real, real. I was working at Rolling Stone uh, at the time in, you know, in the offices every day. And I just kind of holed up and was listening to all my reggae. And one day I was walking by somebody else's office and they were playing like pop music. And it just sounded just so empty. Like that person's not trying to, to help me achieve salvation. You know, that person is not trying to help me transcend. You know, I mean, it sounds corny in a way, but I, I do believe that um, in, its, in it, a variety of ways, reggae music's ambition is, is somehow not merely to entertain you, but to change your life and, and make you aware of other worlds. Pressure drum is one of the reality songs, you know. It's like he's telling you that if you're evil, Jai's gonna drop the pressure on you. Chris Blackwell says, listen guys, you have been recording with Toots from day one, and he's on the verge of breaking into the international market, on the verge, just right here, and we need something to push him over the edge. So what we're going to do, you guys who have been recording with him for all these years and all these albums, you are going to now join forces with the Riley and Jerry, and you're all going to be one entity, and you're going to be called the Matals. And it's going to be Toots and the Matals. Toots was the writer. Toots was the star. Toots was the singer. You never saw anybody but Toots on stage because he's so charismatic still to this day. And the other two guys were like his pals. Blackwell made us the Matals. 
You know, so we the first tour and we were in LA and we had a meeting and he said, well, this is the way he wanted it. You understand? It was Toots and everybody else in the Matels. This is a big point, it, you know, is that when people go and see Toots now and they hear his songs, it's the same band. Yeah. That's what's incredible. So when you hear them, you're hearing the same... Same vibes. Same vibes. And same better. band playing. And they've been with Toots for 30 years. 1970 until now, we have been together. Oh, that sounds... Jesus, that's what, almost 40 years? Ooh, some people don't even live to be 40. At the same time, Chris said to us, I would like you to write a song about Kingston. There'd been this huge hit called Funky Nassau, and I said to Toots, you should do a song called Funky Kingston. And I say, okay. And I call Jerry and Relly, and we go in the corner, and we burn, and we burn, and we come and, and, and we just come and say, Organic. It's real. When you hear it, it, it sounds real, it, you know? And it's true. So it exists in any time. Because it, that will never be out of style. Being true, being organic, committed. That's never out. That exists in every time. Toots represents a different Jamaica as against the contemporary artists like Buju and uh, Beanie Man or Bounty Killer. They're coming out of a different social context. They are like post 80s, where the society has undergone different social changes. Nowadays, reggae has kind of become very angry and all these guys call themselves warlords and all that, you know. And I actually asked Toots, you know, how has reggae changed? And he said, big shoes. That was his answer, big shoes. He said that, and what that really means is his mystical way of saying that it's all just bling now, you know, it's all just all style and no substance. And those great songs and the great vibe that he, you know, basically dedicated his life to, you know. It's just become ruined by these dancehall lords calling themselves warlords and just preaching violence. The messages are either misogynist or homophobic, um, but it's where the culture is now. Don't be prejudiced. Just be good and be humble and so that you can be strong. Because if you don't do that, it's going to change the world to be a worse place. You said that the day would never come When you'd walk out and leave me Not because eh, true love is hard to find I believe true love is hard to find Everyone should know that true love is hard to He's speaking directly to somebody about, you know, you, you know, you say that your love is just for me. I just love how um, vulnerable and how direct he is. You know, he's just, 
he doesn't analyze his lyrics. He just speaks the way he would out for directly from his heart. And there's, a, and there's an interesting way that he puts things, which is ref refreshing. It's just completely different than what I've ever heard. I always sing something about that, but not in the politics way, in my own way, which is the loving way and a way that I could get blessing instead of curse. See, another fool to hurt myself. So I was innocent of what I done to me. They were wrong. Yeah, yeah. They were wrong. Yeah, yeah give it to me one time. Yeah. Give it to me two times. Yeah. You could do any of Tootsie's songs as a slow song, you could do them as a rock song, however you do it. Just the melody, the verse, the chorus, the middle eight are so strong and that's why everybody was dying to be on the classic Grammy winning album which is True Love, Tootsie's album that won the Grammy. True Love is one of those albums that I think in many ways is summed up by its title. You know, the idea that this uh, incredible range of musicians all have felt the impact of Toots and would perform on one of his records conveys something important about what he has accomplished. When we asked them to do it, each of one of them, they said yes, they will do it. And each of one of them, each of them pick their own songs. And when I did it, they kept trying to get me to ad lib, you know, ad lib vocal ad libs. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I mean, when I listen to it now, I can't hear my voice because I did my best to get in underneath Toots and just sing along with him. Rather, and they were going, no, dude, can you sing something around him? And I go, no, you can't. I can't do it. How dare I, you know? Can't muck around with that stuff, it's too good. Always interesting choice of material. You know, he's always been willing to like move a little this way and that, but at the same time, paradoxically, he's very traditional somehow. I mean, somehow he manages to move between those two areas and, and still retain the integrity of what he does. You know. It was the right album. I mean, here he was doing duets with a lot of really well-known fans of his who were also stars. So they called me up and asked, and uh, I think I was on tour, and we fit in some days off and went in the studio, and I got to record with his band, who are some of the greatest musicians. I mean, that was one of the highlights of my life. True love is hard to find, hard to find. Toots was in the peak of my young adulthood. He was my guy, my soul guy, you know. And on stage, I mean, he had charisma and command of the band and of the audience's dynamics on stage. It's tremendous physicality and sexuality. So I was like, you know, you are mighty. This is Toots, and uh, there's no mistaking about it. He puts his own stamp on anything. Uh, 
which is uh, you know just difficult to do about that many years after all. I mean, this is we're talking like me, a veteran here. <laughs> <laughs> He's a performer. He performs on stage. He sings. He dances. He plays a couple of instruments. He conducts. He rap with his audience. He does so many things that after the first song, you say, Jesus, what is going to happen in the second song? And after the second song, you say, who? Nobody, you don't even want to go to the restroom. You, you're afraid that you might miss something. don't go to see Toots Hibbert so much as attending a show as to having a party with him. He doesn't disappoint. There are many occasions where you hear a record of somebody and then you come and see them ten years later and it's like a little bit of a letdown. Toots is not. Toots, Toots gives his everything to the audience. You can just see that. He's, he never, pho quote, phones it in. Never, never, never. When you see Toots on stage, it's like a volcano exploding with rhythm. You know, so Toots, Toots is just music to me. I happen to know that Toots' audience is quite a good mixture. Starts in kindergarten to the home for the age. When you go to a Toots show, you see just hundreds and hundreds of teenagers going crazy. And their parents weren't even born when Toots started, you know? His energy was unbelievable, and it was that. And he had, he had everybody on stage. He got all the audience up with him, you know, dancing and... Uh, and I would never allow that in my show, you know, I just thought this guy is, uh, he's something else. You want to come to the show? It's just an honor just being there, seeing this man looking like he's 16 years old still. He looks older, I look older than him, <laughs> I think. <laughs> But um, <laughs> daddy is like a child, you know, that, and he appeals to them in that way. Like, yeah. and whenever he's on stage, he gets everybody cooperation. Like, he, he, he includes you in the performance. The fact that Toots has resonance with young people means he's going to have resonance for the next 25 years of my life. I get to see people fall in love with him again, and that's good news for me. As long as Toots is doing okay, we got a music business I can stand. I can't switch it off, it just kind of gets me, gets my ear, holds it. From the moment to set the mic, it's like you plug him in the electric city, as I say, Energizer Bunny. And Toots is the only man I know don't sing with the mic here, sing with it down here. And you hear him clear still, you know? <laughs> <laughs> If you come every night, you will hear the same song, but you will see a different performance. And that is what sets him apart from all the other guys. He goes on stage, 
and he portrays what he's feeling that night in through his voice. You have to have the goods to become a star of his magnitude. He's just a soulful performer. I admire him a lot. Uh, he's a great talent, a good singer, a good writer, a good performer. The music that he plays regenerates the audience. When I think about Toots, you know, I think about conviction. You know, I think about the power that he brings to every single performance. The level of intensity is still the same. And it's inspiring. And there are certain things which you know will always you know, just knock your head off. You'll get what you're expecting to get. It'll just stand head and shoulders, and he's got that. I say pressure, I think he's still the best. And I think he'll be the best until he decides to give it up. I don't see nobody doing nothing like what Toots do, you know. Toot. We don't want Toots to go anywhere. You know, we want him to stay right where he is and keep doing what he's doing. When you think of him, can you even stop smiling? Get happy now. Mm -hmm. Praise him. On God Almighty way. Yeah, I'm gonna stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I shall be happy. Every night and day.